Wow. Friendship is witchcraft. Episode 10, you smooze, you lose. (laughs) Before anything starts, a disclaimer appears at the start of the video. The disclaimer reads, the following is a fan-made non-profit parody, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, is owned by Hasbro and DHX Media. This disclaimer probably doesn't offer any real protection in any legal sense, but hey, maybe whoever's behind the curtain at YouTube might watch our video and see this and decide to go easy on us. (laughs) Act 1, Scene 1. The camera slowly pans in on Fluttershy's cottage on a sunny day. Cue a beautiful flute rendition of the FIW theme. Cut to inside. Fluttershy and Discord are sitting across from one another, sipping on tea. Discord says, Oh, Fluttershy, I just wanted to once again thank you for freeing me from my stone prison. I felt like a real stiffen there. Discord tugs comically at his collar, punctuating the pun he has made. Fluttershy laughs with polite indulgence. (laughs) It was no bother, really. I had a free moment and I thought, why not? Resurrecting monsters is kind of a thing I do. (laughs) Oh, how I wish I could be evil as effortlessly as you do. Honestly, what is your secret? Oh, there's really not much to it. Honest. I mean, look at this body. I have recurring evil nemesis written all over me. It's been six months and still nobody takes me seriously. Well, what evil things have you done so far? Well, I removed the burning moon from the middle of the town, I got rid of that tentacle monster that was attacking people, and I fixed all the wood because it kind of looked like you guys had parasprites a while back or something. I also picked up a lot of trash and litter off the ground. I did so many crazy things that are contradictory to this world as I understand it. (laughs) Um, that doesn't sound evil. Just do what's naturally evil to you. You're too self-conscious. Oh, I'm trying my best and I'll never be as not good as Fluttershy. (laughs) Woe is me. Oh, I'm sure you're just being modest. You must have done all kinds of dastardly things to get sealed away in stone for thousands of years. Uh, Oh, but I did that. Part of my greatest stunt as an escape artist. (laughs) Oh. I'm an evil magician after all. That's why I always wear a cape. Discord tugs on the cape he wears on his back. Note, the cape will be photoshopped into every frame in which Discord's back is visible. (laughs) The letter D is printed on the cape. The D stands for disorganized. Fluttershy grimaces in disappointment, feeling the creeping fear that Discord is not what she had hoped. Well, the good news is the day of retribution is coming soon. This weekend, in fact, at the Grand Galloping Gala. Oh? You've never heard of the Grand Galloping Gala? Oh, it's so amazing, Discord. The first time I was invited, I spent the whole time in the beautiful Celestial Garden playing with all the cute and fuzzy animals. Ah, as part of some arcane ritual, I assume. No, it was just for fun. I have hobbies, you know. But this year, I think I'm just going to chill inside with a friend. Once you've seen one animal, you've kind of seen them all. A friend, eh? Can your old pal Discord come along? Um, well, sorry, Discord, but I actually already used my plus one on my friend, Occult Girl 37 We met through a website that helps cults find each other. Oh, I think I've heard of that site. Isn't it called Grinder? You're thinking of a different kind of cult. <laughs> So, so, you're telling me you're going to travel hundreds of miles to meet someone you've only ever met online? Yeah, but I don't see why that would be a problem. Discord turns his head to directly face the fourth wall. Well, who am I to judge? We've actually been planning this for a long time. The gala will be the perfect place to stage one of our blood rituals and finally resurrect the great Lord Smooze. Smooze? Bum, 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 bum. Friendship is witchcraft. Yay. Title card. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're up. Act one, scene two. Cut to Spike, who is sleeping at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, which is extremely typical of the lazy dragon. The scaly sloth sleeps on a cardboard box besides Twilight Sparkle's king-size Tempur-Pedic sleep system. 
He uses a garbage bag as a blanket. As the repulsive purple reptile snoozes stupidly, he murmurs to himself, Oh, what's that, Twilight? You want me to go with you to the gala? Well, of course I consider you my best friend. And you want me to perform a duet with special musical guest BBBFF? This is going to be the best night ever! Why, this almost seems as if it were some kind of dream. Even so, as long as I'm not violently awakened from my fantasy, I can finally be happy. Just then, Discord teleports into the room, violently awakening Spike from his fantasy. <laughs> Spike's greasy body flops out of bed with a splat. He comically tangles himself up in his own garbage bag blanket and tumbles down the stairs. Cut to Discord, looking a bit confused. Oh, whoops, wrong house. Act 1, Scene 3. Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo are running around the boutique like wild animals. Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity completely ignore them. They are too busy trying on their outfits for the Grand Galloping Gala. Rarity is wearing a hat so large and magnificent that it fills 90% of the frame during this entire sequence. <laughs> Applejack is wearing her best military uniform. Rainbow Dash is wearing a Spider-Man costume. The girls chatter excitedly. I can't wait to sell my delicious apple sweets and raise money to replace my granny's hip. I can't wait to meet a blue-blooded prince who will take me away from my boring life. I can't wait for anything at all. The doctors call it ADHD. <laughs> I call it RDHD because my name is Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash High Definition. <laughs> Suddenly, a napkin on the floor folds itself several times over until it becomes an origami version of Discord. Then Discord reveals himself from behind a couch. Does any pony here have a plus one to the Grand Galloping Gala? Rarity, Applejack, and Rainbow Dash look at each other, then back at Discord. The camera closes up on Rarity. I'm afraid I already gave my plus one to T-Rex. He was just here two minutes ago. The camera pans to Applejack. And I traded my plus one for some magical beans. The camera pans to Rainbow Dash. I ate mine. Discord looks dejected. No poo. Discord leaves through the front door, but doesn't close it. I wonder who that was. Act one, scene four. Pinkie Pie is busy baking, as well as caring for the cake twins, who are actually Pinkie Pie's own parents magically reborn. Pinkie appears worn thin by the emotional burden of caring for them while hiding their identities. Cue a sad rendition of Pinkie's brew. It is a, in a clever video game reference, Discord emerges from a huge green pipe in the floor of the bakery. <laughs> when he emerges from the pipe, however, rather than a Mario character, he is zanily dressed as Shadow the Hedgehog. Wow, that was so cool! What? But I'm dressed as a villain from the entirely wrong game! Isn't that terribly chaotic of me, hmm? Discord, Shadow the Hedgehog isn't a villain. He's an anti-hero. Discord slaps its crazy lion paw against his forehead in self-disgust. Ugh, stupid Discord. Fluttershy would have never made such a careless mistake. Anyway, Discord, I'm so glad you came. Life is tough when you're a single mother without any friends or family. Hey, weird question. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you would sacrifice anything? And then when you finally end up getting what you want, it wasn't what you expected? And there's still a hole in your heart that can seemingly never be filled? Wow, I guess I have a lot on my mind. Hey, Discord, I'm glad you're here to talk to. We should hang out more. Hey, maybe you could be my plus one to the gala. Pinkie Pie's emotional baggage troubles Discord. Cue the wah-wah-wah trumpet. He looks around desperately for an excuse to leave. <laughs> he looks desperately around for an excuse to leave, finds none, and decides to just walk out of the bakery in silence. <laughs> the green pipe can still be seen in the background, awkwardly lingering in the shop. Act 1, Scene 5. Feeling dismayed, Discord returns to his own house in a separate realm. Discord's house is absolutely crazy, there are pictures hanging upside down on the wall. Some clothes are in a pile on the floor. All the carpet is beige. Refrigerator magnets on the fridge spell out the words, Discord's crazy house. <laughs> Discord hangs up his coat across two different coat racks that are both very close together, which is preposterous. <laughs> Discord sighs and then says, Well, if I can't go to the gala, I might as well start building that birdhouse I got. I think it's up in the closet somewhere. 
The camera follows Discord as he walks up the stairs to the second story of his modestly sized house. Discord locates the box to the do-it-yourself birdhouse he bought himself but never put together. Now he's going to do that. <laughs> Dissolved to several seconds later, Discord has already unloaded all the pieces from the box and set them on the table. Because he is Discord, several of the pieces are not organized in an efficient manner. <laughs> Discord observes the instruction manual. Well, let's see. I should have all the materials I need to construct the birdhouse. Except, drat! I don't have any glue! Is it too late to go to the store and buy some? Oh, maybe I have some somewhere. Discord crosses to one of his kitchen drawers. He pulls it open and with his eagle-clawed hand begins to sift through it in search of glue. He brushes aside an old library card, several pens from various hotels, and a box of toothpicks. He opens the drawer next to it, but all it contains are 200 of his personalized business cards and an index card upon which he has written, you can be a star, as an inspirational message to himself. <laughs> he opens a third drawer. It is completely empty. You know what? Forget the birdhouse. Suddenly, there's a knock on the door. Discord opens it to see not a pony, but a cloud. It's no ordinary cloud, but rain cloud. <laughs> the magical sentient cloud who delivers the mail. She is trapped in the realm between the living and the dead. Rain Cloud emits a beautiful symphony from her body, which is how she communicates. With this symphony, she explains to Discord how she, the whole plus one system is just a formality and that they aren't actually checking anyone's tickets. You can kind of just walk right in as long as you look like you belong there. <laughs> he could even just RSVP on Facebook if he wanted. Discord is so delighted by this news that he hugs Rain Cloud with both arms. Yippee! Act 2, Scene 1. It's the night of the gala. Cue triumphant trumpet music. Ponies are seen mingling everywhere. The decorations are extravagant. Several background pony lines can be heard saying things like, I love parties. And, We're at the Grand Galloping Gala. <laughs> Celestia and Twilight stand at the top of the steps of the gala, looking down at all the ponies below. It was a pleasure helping you plan this year's Grand Galloping Gala, Princess Celestia. Ah, Twilight! How long have you been standing there? <laughs> Please don't sneak up on me like that. Whoops. Anyway, it was a pleasure helping you plan this year's Grand Galloping Gala. Oh, I don't recall asking for your help this year, Twilight. What exactly have you done? It's a secret. You'll see. <laughs> don't tell me it's another one of your murder mysteries. Nope. It's a murder mystery. <laughs> hey, uh, wait a second. What happened to that very important diplomatic mission I sent you on? Oh, you mean the high school thing? I'm still on that mission. I just didn't want to miss the gala, so I came back. Suddenly, Tupac's California love comes on as if from nowhere. Discord has arrived. He coolly struts into the gala wearing a dapper pink tuxedo and the same cape from before. Beside him is his plus one, a large gelatinous pile of green ooze wearing a hat. Hello, every pony. I'd like you all to meet my longtime pal, Jeff the Blob. Say hi, Jeff. Jeff the Blob does not say hi. Instead, he eats Scootaloo. <laughs> Cue the wah wah trumpet. <laughs> Discord looks around nervously, but then pats his friend on the shoulder reassuringly. <laughs> Jeff has always been shy in front of strangers. I'm trying to help him come out of his shell. Or in this case, ectoplasm. Discord's words fall on deaf ears, unfortunately. California love is still plain, and it's so loud that no one can hear anything. <laughs> Act 2, Scene 2. Cut to some time later. The party is in full swing. Cheap CGI streamers rain from the ceiling in the foreground on an endless loop. Ponies chat and mingle. In the center of the room is a dance floor. In the center of the dance floor is Applejack's stand, at which she is selling apple-related goods. <laughs> A few ponies awkwardly try to dance around her. She keeps yelling at them to buy something or get out of her shop. <laughs> she also occasionally murmurs, you break it, you buy it, <laughs> seemingly to herself. Discord spots Fluttershy across the hall. She is with her new friend, a cult girl 37. A cult girl speaks in a groovy, far out way. Her cutie mark is a Ouija board. The waterfall's energy was just so righteous, and I never would have seen it if I hadn't blown up that dam. <laughs> That's such a beautiful story. I'm glad I found someone I can connect with so well. Cut to Discord. He sees Fluttershy. Oh no, there's Fluttershy. 
I've got to make a good, bad first impression on her. But what? I know. I'll walk right up to her and interrupt her conversation. That's really evil. Cut to Fluttershy. I just can't believe that tonight I'll finally get to meet Lord Smooze. Only a few more pieces need to be put Discord in- loudly interrupts. Fluttershy! Look! It's me! Good old Discord! Care to introduce me to your friend? Oh, um, hi. This is Occult Girl 37. I told you about her earlier. You can just call me Ouija if you want. That's my IRL name. <laughs> <laughs> and Ouija? This is Discord. I kind of just met him. I don't know him very well. Fluttershy and I are extremely good friends. Nice. Fluttershy and I were just talking about Lord Smooze and the rest. She trails of off when she sees Fluttershy gesturing frantically to her, to not mention Lord Smooze in front of Discord, lest they be forced to include him in their evil plans. <laughs> oh? A-, a resurrection? Sounds like an evil mastermind, such as myself, would be a- the perfect accomplice to this chicanery. Tell me more about this... Lord Smooze. Well, he's a big blob of ooze, and the only other concrete fact I know about him is that he's purple. Sounds like my kind of fellow. Fluttershy tries to steer the conversation away. So, um, who's your friend, Discord? Well, I'd call him more of a sidekick than a friend. His name is Jeff the Blob. I found him on this neat site called Craigslist, since I needed a plus one for the party. He's a big blob of ooze, and the only other concrete fact I know about him is that he's green. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Jeff. There is an awkward lull in the conversation. It's always really great to meet new nefarious characters, and it looks like you've got a good look. Really? You think I've got a good look? Discord produces a stack of business cards from his pocket. Here, why don't you take my card? He taps a claw against the URL on the card. There isn't really anything up on my website yet, but keep an eye out. I'm getting a lot of new projects going on right now. Do you have a Facebook? I can add you on it right now. I I don't really use it that much. Follow me on Twitter, then. I can DM you. Fluttershy and Ouija awkwardly wait for Discord to leave so they can resume their conversation. There is a long, awkward beat. Jeff the Blob can be heard breathing. I guess I'll see you around then. Text me when that smooth thing starts. Just as Discord turns around, Pinkie Pie appears next to him with her nose right up in his face. Oh, hey, Discord. You came after all. I hope I wasn't a drag earlier. I don't want you to think I'm not crazy and fun. Pinkie Pie pulls out a party cannon and fires it. The crowd goes wild, laughing and applauding. One background pony can be heard remarking, I like cannons. (laughs) (laughs) You never know what I'll do. Not me. Not old Pinkie. Running around, making cakes, doing chaotic things that disrupt ordinary life. Can we talk sometime? Would that be okay? Despite Pinkie Pie's words of reassurance, Discord looks into her eyes and sees the desperation in them and the fine sheen of sweat on her forehead. He cautiously backs away from her. Cue funny pizzicato strings. Act 2, Scene 3. Twilight surveys the ballroom, feeling an immense sense of pride. Just then, she spots Discord and Jeff the Blob. She lets out an audible squawk. Blah! Narrowing her eyes suspiciously, she sidles over to Applejack. Hey, who's that silly-looking dragon on the dance floor? The one who looks like a crime against nature. I thought his name was Spack. No, (laughs) Spike's not even here. I mean the tall one. I've got a bad feeling about that guy. Hmm, he looks mighty familiar, like I've seen him before. Wasn't he Mushu in Mulan? He was, wasn't he? The little red dragon who didn't do that tongue thing. (laughs) I reckon that's him. (laughs) Well, whoever he is, we should have the elements of harmony ready, just in case. Where did Rainbow Dash go? Right here, Twy! Twilight looks up. Rainbow Dash is standing on her head. Oh. Well, where's Rarity? Here I am, darling, and I already found that prince of mine. Pan over to Rarity, who approaches her friends with a stallion on her arm. It is Steel Blitz, the OC of our contest winner. All right. Okay, so we so. pause. Now, normally in the episode, what we do is we'd have a little contest, and we'd select someone's OC, and we'd have them come mm-hmm. up. 
and, but today we don't, and we'd have them do the voice. Yeah, they would provide the voice. But for we don't have that, so we'd like to invite an audience member up. Mm -hmm. to it's really do easy. We just need one line. line. It's literally one line. All right, who it's should it be? It's a male voice. Let's someone see. who can do we, a good it could be, job. All right, let's Who's see. Who's a good voice uh, there, It's actor. really high pressure. We need someone to do a really um, great job with this. You're, please. All right, you're up. This is yeah. so important. It's, the whole thing will be ruined yeah. if you don't do this you right. You can't screw this up. We, we got to take this very and seriously. And we have one shot yeah. to get this right, so don't yeah. screw it up. So yeah. remember, what was the line? My name is Steel Blitz. All right, okay. perfect. Okay, I think this is going to okay. work. Okay. All right, so, so you, you tell him what, what yeah, the script calls Steel for. Steel Blitz is a black alicorn with bat wings instead of pegasus wings. <laughs> Slanted pupils like a cat's and orange freckles. He has the softest, smoothest, creamiest voice you've ever heard. He speaks with a thick, not to mention sexy, South African accent, which is one of the hardest accents to do convincingly. He also has a rare speech condition in which every sentence involuntarily sounds like a question. Also, he only speaks in falsetto. Okay, go. <laughs> All right. My name is Steel Blitz. Okay. Oh my god. Right. <sighs> the episode is saved. All right. We we can resume. Very good. All right. Where's Pinkie Pie? Pan over to Pinkie Pie. She fires her party cannon. It was funny the first time, but now everyone is generally ignoring her. Great. Now all we need to do is find our adorable and harmless friend Fluttershy and we're, we'll be ready to combat any forces of evil that rear their ugly head. Immediately jump cut to the conservatory, which is dark and secluded. Fluttershy and Ouija are dressed in cloaks, their faces illuminated by the glow of ceremonial candles. There is a large pentagram drawn on the floor. Fluttershy arranges the materials for her ritual around the circle. A spool of rainbow-colored thread, a rubber chicken, Apple Bloom's friend Twist. <laughs> All the elements of harmony and a pretty flower. Perfect. After the great unbinding, this force of evil will at last rear its ugly head. Our dignified Lord Smooth shall ooze forth from his prison like toothpaste from a tube. Fluttershy and Ouija girl laugh in unison. Zoom into the pentagram on the floor, where Twist still lies prone, looking content. The gala is fun! <laughs> Act 2, Scene 4. Meanwhile, in the main hall, Discord looks about for his evil friends. He doesn't see them anywhere. Oh my, if I ever hope to impress my new evil crew, I'm going to have to draw more attention to myself. <laughs> Time to cause some panic at this disco. <laughs> Discord considers for a moment and then exclaims, Whammo! Discord makes triumphant finger guns in the direction of the punch bowl, instantly transforming the fruit punch into Mountain Dew Code Red. Shloom! Discord waves his arms exuberantly. The bouquets of balloon animals transform magically into ordinary balloons. <laughs> K -k 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 Millions of light years away, a star explodes, <laughs> thus removing a star from the night sky. This can be seen distantly out the window. Discord puts his hands on his waist, immensely pleased with himself as he looks about the room, waiting for the ponies to react to his newly wrought chaos. Time elapsed windmill effect. Forty minutes have passed, and no pony seems to have noticed anything is awry. Although a few seem annoyed that Discord is standing in the middle of the room, having not moved in forty minutes. <laughs> a passing pony remarks, This guy ought to be a statue. <laughs> Discord frowns to himself. Now what do I do? Uh, where'd Jeff go? Jeff? Jeff the Blob is nowhere to be seen. Discord shrugs and looks around for new ideas. This time he notices the empty stage. Ooh, I know. I'll disrupt the scheduled programming by performing my, by performing my open mic comedy routine. That should cause calamity for the production staff of this event. Cut to the stage. It remains empty for a few seconds. Then suddenly the mic stand begins to wiggle, transforming into Discord's torso. His arms, his arms and legs emerge from the sides of it. During this process, the microphone is emitting terrible screeching feedback for all in the hall to hear. The crowd makes general sounds of discomfort and annoyance. <laughs> Ooh, I just flew in from Ponyville and boy are my arms tired. So you'll have to excuse me if I don't lift my arms for the duration of my routine as they are incredibly weak at the moment and leaving them hanging limply at my sides is really the only way for me to avoid discomfort. 
Uh, you'll just have to allow my jokes to carry themselves on the salience of my humor without the aid of zany or exuberant gestures from my arms or hands. Discord now has the attention of the entire crowd. So how about that Kim Kardashian, eh? She's something. No pony laughs. You guys ever noticed that whenever you go to build your birdhouse, you don't got any glue? <laughs> Why is it, is it that you never have enough material? A gray pony in the crowd speaks in a monotone voice. You certainly don't have enough material. In a pop culture reference, Discord turns blue and takes on the appearance of the genie from Disney's Aladdin. I ain't got no respect, no respect at all. Discord's blue genie face morphs to resemble the genie from Disney's Aladdin's impression of Rodney Dangerfield. Several children become frightened by this and run away. They don't understand it was a joke because they are too young to have any awareness of Rodney Dangerfield. In a surge of growing desperation, Discord delivers his next punchline without any setup. Talk about eye candy. <laughs> Am I right? Not a single pony laughs. <laughs> Across the hall, Pinkie Pie sees that Discord is losing his audience and hops forward onto the stage to save the show. A bouncy instrumental kicks in, and Pinkie begins to sing one of her rousing musical numbers entitled Laugh in the Dark. The lyrics are both melancholy and uplifting and irrepressibly catchy. The song is roughly one minute and 52 seconds long, which is almost long enough to constitute a proper song, but not quite. An extended version will never be released. <laughs> the ponies in the crowd are moved and delighted by Pinky's amazing performance and begin to laugh and cheer uproariously. Pinky, Pinky turns to Discord in delight. We did it, Discord! Pinky turns to hand Discord a bouquet of flowers. Discord is collapsed face first on the floor. His arms were so tired that he had to lie down and try to recuperate. <laughs> He has missed the entire performance, but is just aware of it enough to be embittered by the crowd's response to Pinkie Pie. Pinkie fails to notice this. She is caught up in the warm glow of acceptance, something she has never truly felt in her entire life. Just then, Twilight Sparkle snatches the microphone away from Pinkie Pie. Princess Celestia is dead! All of the ponies in attendance gasp and wail in horror. She was discovered poisoned in the billiard room. But who could have done such a thing? <laughs> the crowd response changes from horror to dawning realization. This is part of Twilight Sparkle's murder mystery game. Some aggravated groans can be heard. To get to the bottom of this, we'll have to follow a series of clues. A mysterious voice calls out. Did somebody say clues? Perhaps I can be of service. Suddenly, a six-foot-tall horse bursts through the doors. He wears a deer stalker and puffs on a pipe. My name is Sir Clop Pones, the, wor <laughs> <laughs> the world's greatest horse detective. I am here to solve this mystery. You win every year, Sir Clop. You're disqualified. Sir Clop hangs his head in sorrow. Being the world's greatest horse detective is my gift and my curse. <laughs> He exits the gala. Twilight turns back to the audience. Now, the only thing we have is the killer's shoe. She holds up an oversized human shoe. If we can find the trail he left behind, we'll find the killer. Discord surges into action. He must solve the mystery before any pony else and take all the glory. As he runs out into the hall, he quickly encounters a trail of construction paper footprints. <gasps> Success! Discord is elated. He will be the victor. But then he remembers his pal Fluttershy. Wait, I am a fearsome villain. Why should I solve a mystery when I can create a new one? Discord chuckles evilly to himself as he stoops <laughs> down and begins to pick up the footprints <laughs> by hand and move them to an incorrect location. <laughs> <laughs> this is a long process as his arms are tired and he must take frequent breaks. <laughs> but wait. How will every pony know that it was I who ruined their carefully constructed plans? I know. I shall wait at the end of the new trail and gloat when they arrive. Discord smiles to himself and steps through the doors of the conservatory where the footprints now lead. Act 2, Scene 5. Twilight leads a pack of aspiring sleuths through the castle, hot on the trail of the killer. Psst! Hey, Twilight! Mind giving me a hint as to just who this killer might be? 
I'm as confused as a rattlesnake in a washing machine. <laughs> I'm afraid I couldn't if I wanted to, Applejack. I took a pill to wipe my own memory of the killer's identity. I wanted to see if my detective mind could outsmart the only nemesis as clever as me, myself. You know who I haven't seen all night? Fluttershy. She and I were so close back when we were doing that smooth thing together. I wonder what ever happened to that. Do you think she replaced me? And I haven't seen Discord in a while. He's my best friend. And I haven't seen Jeff the Blob in a while. Actually, I've never seen him. I never even learned his name. Uh, oh, steel steel Blitz. Blitz! You're we missing your line. line! Come on, you're missing Come it! On. Come on, you've got a line! Oh. God, get, get your head in the game! We told you to be prepared yeah. for anything. Come on! I can't with the program. I am Steel. Oh, goodness. No, you have a new line. It's oh, different. Right. Oh, my God. Why would a killer be a leave behind a shoe? Good. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on, girls. I see something. Twilight has found the relocated trail of footprints leading straight to the conservatory. Act 2, scene 6. Cut to inside the conservatory. Fluttershy and Ouija sit in folding chairs, awaiting the return of their glorious leader. The sacred objects are arranged in a pentagram on the floor. Twist looks a little bored by this point, and is on her phone playing some app game that's like a ripoff of Angry Birds, except with the minions from Despicable Me. <laughs> the time is almost upon us. When the moonlight shines through the central window, the gate will be opened, freeing Lord Smooth. I'm glad we've reiterated this point to ourselves constantly throughout these last 45 minutes. It's really helped smooth over what would have otherwise been a very slow and tedious part of the evening. Don't you mean smooth over? They both <laughs> giggle together. <laughs> oh, Fluttershy, there's no pony as funny as you. They both look up to the window where a beam of moonlight is creeping ever closer to their room. Here it comes. <laughs> Right now, nothing can stop the smooths. Just then, Discord enters the conservatory, looking pleased with himself. He is surprised to see the ponies. Oh, Fluttershy! I had wondered where you'd gone. We must have gotten separated somehow. Do you not have my phone number? This is why we need each other's phone numbers. Fluttershy is in a panic to see him. Wait, Discord, no pony else saw you come out here, did they? Any pony that might have followed you? Well... Thinking it will be funny, Discord shapeshifts into a wishing well. Answer the question, Discord! Just then, Twilight Sparkle, as well as her junior sleuth society, the JSS for short, enter the conservatory. They all gasp in perfect unison, noticing the runes painted on the floor, as well as more revealing words printed in English, such as evil, resurrect, and dark lord. <laughs> Fluttershy and Ouija freeze in place guiltily. Twilight takes in the scene. Well, well, well. Cut to Discord, still in the shape of a well. <laughs> now, Twilight looks around the room, noticing the other things. Huh. Looks like I've planted a clever red herring to throw myself off the case. Nice try, Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> Girls, let's get out of here. Fluttershy sighs in relief as the ponies turn to leave, but then Discord springs out of the well. Guess again, Twilight Sparkle, my nemesis. Twas I, Discord, Lord of Chaos. I moved your clues completely off their course, ruining your murder mystery. He cackles evilly. <laughs> None of this has anything to do with your plans. Then wait, what is all this? Well... I ain't no shirt clock pawns, but it looks to me like this is some sort of arcane blood ritual to resurrect an otherworldly monster. What? Well, this isn't allowed. Girls, assemble the elements of harmony. Rarity trots forward with an empty cardboard box labeled Elements of Harmony. She scoops all the elements up off the floor, breaking the ritual circle. Cool. Take that other stuff, too. Put it in my closet or something. Rarity scoops up Twist and the other items and exits the room. <laughs> Now that that's taken care of, who's responsible for this? Well, it wasn't me. Suddenly, all eyes are on Fluttershy. Um, well, there's only one person I can think of who would be evil enough and powerful enough to resurrect an ancient monster. Discord! Every pony gasps. Wait, what? You really mean that, Fluttershy? Discord presses a clawed hand to his heart, touched. Cut to Fluttershy, smiling at him. Yes, 
Yes, Discord, I really do. Oh, I'm so happy I could giggle and dance all night. Junior detectives, arrest this evil beast. Lyra and Jeff the Blob step forward and slap Discord into handcuffs. You think you've won? Guess again, because I, Discord, God of Chaos, and Twilight Sparkle's arch nemesis will return. As he's being whisked away, Discord turns to Fluttershy with a fond smile and mouths the words, thank you. <laughs> Lyra and Jeff slam Discord into the back of a police car and drive him off to jail. Every pony claps and cheers. Yeehaw! Woohoo! Said Rarity, doing a perfect Applejack impression. <laughs> <laughs> Act two, scene seven. Note, the camera shoots the scene in one impressive continuous shot without the aid of special effects. <laughs> the camera tracks around the floor of the gala. The festivities are winding down and ponies are heading home for the night. A custodian is seen throwing away construction paper footprints, envelopes with question marks on them, police do not cross tape, a magnifying glass, a large fingerprint, and several other props from Twilight's elaborate murder mystery that were never actually discovered. One by one, the main six get a scene that resolves their storyline this episode. Cut to Applejack. Applejack is counting her money and leaping in the air, clicking her heels in delight. With this money, I can replace every bone in Granny's body. <laughs> and even some of Apple Bloom's. Cut to Rarity. Rarity is bidding goodnight to her gentleman caller. I had the most enchanted time with you, Steel Blitz. Rarity. They embrace passionately. <laughs> Cut to Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash is floating lifeless in the fountain in the center of the room. A, do a doctor on scene pronounces her dead, an accidental drowning. Just then, a mystical pink portal opens up in the ceiling, and Rainbow Dash flies out alive and well. Hey, guys! I went to this cool place called heaven. I missed you guys. A counter appears on the screen below Rainbow Dash that reads eight out of nine. <laughs> Cut to Fluttershy. Fluttershy and Ouija are sipping Mountain Dew Code Red, still dressed in their dark cloaks. Even though we didn't resurrect our evil leader, we had fun, and that's what's important. We can always try again next year. You know, the ritual didn't look like it was working even a little. And this is my fourth unsuc unsuccessful attempt at bringing Smooze back. I'm usually very good at this. Maybe, maybe Smooze is just a myth after all. But you know what's real? Our friendship. Fluttershy and Ouija hug. Cut to Twilight. Twilight Sparkle stands with Princess Celestia. You did a great job hiding in your room all night, Princess. It definitely helped lend some authenticity to my murder mystery. I must admit, I was pretty shocked when I came downstairs and saw everyone calm and collected. I was honestly expecting some terrible thing to happen this year. Chaos and calamity, for example. I was also very skeptical about your murder mystery, but having examined the scene in the conservatory, I'm rather impressed at your forensic detail, Twilight. Yeah, I'm pretty smart. It was pretty complex how you arranged the brushstrokes on the pentagram to imply two culprits instead of one. The way that the Latin handwriting on the wall implied a female culprit was also very clever. I also liked how the key to the conservatory was discovered alongside a piece of pink hair. The subtle attention to detail was outstanding. If only I were there to see how the whole thing went down. Hey, you know what they say about Twilight Sparkle? I am smart. <laughs> Well, against all odds, this evening went off without a hitch. Yeah, it's just a shame Spike didn't come. He was supposed to be my plus one. I was going to have him perform live on stage with pop band BBBFF and everything. Cut to Pinkie Pie. She sits dejected at a table, staring at a slice of cake. Oh, Cakey, my new best friend is gone. But what right do I have to complain? What's wrong with me? All my dreams have come true, so why aren't I happy? A voice over her shoulder says, That's the best part. Pinkie Pie turns around to see Jeff the Blob standing behind her. He has changed into a suave overcoat and taken off his top hat to reveal a full head of attractively slicked back hair. You've got to find a new dream. Pinkie Pie smiles at Jeff. <laughs> Why? 
Why don't we get out of here? We can find some place to talk. The two leave the gala and climb into Jeff the Blob's sleek convertible. <laughs> Jeff the Blob climbs into the driver's seat. He turns to face the camera, winks, and Mission Impossible style, pulls away the green ooze to reveal purple ooze underneath. <laughs> The car pulls away to reveal the license plate reading Smooths. <laughs> the screen cuts to black for credits, but then Discord pushes up the black portion of the, of the screen like a curtain. Well, I guess that just goes to show you, kids. When you smooze, you lose. The end. Okay, thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs> and that was it. That's it. <laughs> so you're going to see that in its entirety, exactly as we read it, yeah, up we'll on just, YouTube. Yeah, you know, all the footage is already there, so yeah. we'll just, um, you just apply Pretty it. Pretty easy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we just have to buy the rights to California Love. Yeah. We're still in the process of doing Animate that Animate a couple scenes, maybe. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, we we'll need see. to get that guy who animated Double Rain Boom and get him to do most yeah. of this. So Pretty much the whole episode. We'll send him an email. Yeah. <laughs> 